Hey. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Is that better? Yep, I think I pulled something out there. And what it is, if I wear headphones, you can't hear me. And then I'm just trying to be respectful to my my new neighbors. So they're above and maybe through that, through that wall. So I'll stay in here. Well, they're, they're going to hear you anyway. <laughs> How are you? This is day one back in the uh, space where I have real computer and a, it's now, I went from this big space to a tiny room. I think that's a similar situation for many of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I had a sweet deal and now it's a little different, but I'm in a collective space. So there's more people here, which I have to get used to, I guess, because I had a lot of time and space to myself, which was mm -hmm. very nice. So what happened to you? <laughs> the thing that I've said in, in several videos <laughs> is that it's very hard to comprehend from a distance. <laughs> all that's happened because unless you've been standing next to me for the past three weeks you just you just can't believe anything I'm saying <laughs> I mean it sounds utterly preposterous but I've lived through all of it and through, by living through it I have my, I now have to sit down and write it all down for posterity um, because I don't want the the facts to be shifted and, and now that we've, that we've got these tools I've proven right okay I couldn't prove that that was Elijah but that was they were his shoes going up the escalator <laughs> like God knows what time in the morning having fallen asleep fall asleep on the train and he said do not fall asleep he was a big uh, African guy and uh, Elijah welcome come here get on that bus you go Stay awake. So, um, yeah, so I've had many, many very dangerous, hellish experiences, particularly in airports at three in the morning. Not very pleasant. L Limbo is not a nice place to be. <laughs> so, uh, but I'd help. You know, Gene was there all the time, uh, and a few others. So that was, that was good. And now the main thing is my sister who is basically from her perception, she's, she's trying to put me in the room where you are, like put me in the smallest room possible <laughs> and, lock, and lock me down. You ain't moving. I now have control of all the money of the family. She has a lot of money, and I'm now, I've, I've actually, on Game of Now, you may have seen it, I've put up my bank records, my bank details. I'm saying, if you want to ch check that, I've got 1.71 pence, and she's got millions, and my parents have millions, they're locking me down. Sanity. And they're trying to get me to go to the Priory to have an examination for my sanity. So I'm going to enter the Priory and take on the mental health system tomorrow <laughs> really yeah. well if you, well if you need anyone to vouch for your sanity i can i can put on a good front okay look at this i've got this new coat i've uh, i've changed i went through my own transformation i think we both went through our transformations again yeah and i went from a poncho to this coat and basically this changes everything in Canada. Just as long as you fit in clothing wise, they'll probably forgive everything. And if, and if I take away every part of me that was quirky, people are like almost running down the street to say hi to me. 
Well, as long as I've got headphones on, <laughs> and uh, I've got I've got my green, I've got my North Face jacket, you know. I do notice that nobody else is wearing that colour. I'm the only green anywhere, <laughs> and that's a that's a that's a slight problem because I'm sort of like a flashing beacon going that guy. Well, well. So, um, lots of purples in Scotland. Lots of uh, lots of blues and reds, and the colours are, are are everywhere. So it's and I, I've I've had some. Oh, sorry, I, I can't wait to tell some of the stories. So um, I'm now my sister's paid for an Airbnb. So I'm in this flat near where I used to live in Glasgow. Glasgow is clearly ground zero. It's my starting point. It's, it's I, I recognize everything. I know everything here. The information is just, yeah, this is where you were, were born. So people are just appearing from all over the place. And, and I'm going to be careful. If, you, if I get energy wrong, I'm, I'm, a, I'm rushed by people just bang, banging into me. And I've got to stay, I've got to stay grounded and just push energy away and yeah tomorrow well today it's now 3.33 here very nice thank you I've got to walk straight into the Priory and say hello I want to present myself to Dr I forget his name but it's a very Indian name and my sister has arranged this I was supposed to receive a call and I haven't received a call in two days so I decided to present myself to you and can we now please what do I do now? And see what happens. Wow. And if you want to see my Facebook feed, please do. I'm on LinkedIn. I have people vouching <laughs> for me. It's LinkedIn. <laughs> do, you, do you know you're kind of like... <laughs> but please don't let my sister show you the, show you the abuse that I threw at her a couple of days ago. <laughs> Sorry, sister. <laughs> huh. Yeah. It'd be funny if you, you played these these conversations we had to the prior or whatever to, to justify your sanity and say, look, this guy thinks I'm sane. And he just goes, you're both barmy. <laughs> this is proof that you're both barmy. <laughs> well, there's... Uh... Thing is, the uh, there's a thing in Finland called peer to peer open dialogue, peer supported open dialogue. Yeah, you heard, of it? you heard of it? Yeah, in Canada, the same. There's a similar thing. So basically, I'm going to say, listen, I'm very happy to sit and talk to you. I'm sure you maybe agree with me that I'm reasonably lucid. I'm in no danger to myself or anybody else. What I would request is that process to bring in my sister, perhaps my mother and father, my friend who's here, maybe Lucy who's in Finhorn, to come and be in a circle and we can get it all out. That would be supportive to me. And I'd just like to say at no point has anybody asked, Graham, what are your needs? It's all been about, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you should be doing this, you shouldn't be behaving like that. Constant. So, and I understand why. I forgive that because it's, I, you know, I can really understand it. But if I get that that voice, and then my friend Nigel, the Glaswegian, he says, if you can record that conversation, if you, I would pay ten euros to watch you in conversation with the analyst about mental health. <laughs> you could sell tickets. You could you could make money. You could say to your sister, listen, I made. I can if I sell tickets. <laughs> I can make enough money to last me for a year. But we'll see. So your 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 journey, because because like you know, I was sort of like for the last three weeks, I've been up and about in bad yep. internet cafes, and uh, I lost my space beginning of the month. And so since then, I find I get pretty erratic because I'm not on the net much, and the internet's so slow, and I'm just. I, I'm not, I can't be how present I was before. Not that I was that present, but 
now I feel I'm a little bit, <laughs> I like it. It's, a, it's like the big support, the planetary guardians, he's here, but I got to go while you're going through whatever you're going through. But it seemed to me like you're having a bit of fun. I mean, I, I only sort of saw glimpses, but. Well, I had fun, but then I was, uh, so here's a true story. And I'm touching my nose, not because I'm lying. It's because I need to breathe. So there's always dual interpretations. In fact, there's many interpretations. I might have an itchy nose. <laughs> might, you know, a rat might have gone up my nose. <laughs> so I've, people jump to conclusions very quickly. So one of the things when you're traveling very fast in 5D is that you better be careful what you're thinking and what you're attending to. And also what you say. If you say, well, suddenly, bang, it can jump right in front of you. And that can set you off balance. And before you know it, you get into that fear base, and then suddenly all hell breaks loose, literally. So I'm standing in Schiphol Airport, <laughs> and I'm talking to dear old Jean. And Jean has declared that her role is to die, to kill off my former personality, to destroy it to slice it and destroy it and put me into such terror. So I'm standing there and she starts, to, she writes, I'm on her, she's got to talking, terror, do, 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 do. And my back starts to get very, very cold. The security guards in the, in the airport are to my left and right. And then groups of people start arriving towards where I'm standing. What? Dark, dark clothes looking very like this. <laughs> And I'm standing there going, fuck. <laughs> and then I start to get nervous. And then Jean is on the call going, hello, hello. Oh, 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 oh. it's not working. It's not working. So I'm just going, la, 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 I love you. Just singing, singing, loving you. And then what happens is amazing is that a guy arrives with his family and there's kids and babies and they're all bright colors. Another guy comes in with his wife and a dog. Another guy comes, sits behind me. So I've got, they, they start to take the corners. Now I'm very aware that if anybody's listened to this, who's a professional, say you clearly need to be locked up. <laughs> um, however, there are security cameras and um, there are all, all of that will have seen that, uh, whatever night it was. And then basically the dog and the, the woman were standing there, sitting there and, and none of them, they never say anything to me. And it was all fine. And they moved away. The security, they all drifted away. I was in my, I was completely grounded and relaxed. And then in from the side came this young guy who was dark green, pure. Wow. His energy was fuck. So I said, right. Yeah, you stuck. Love him. Take care. Good boy. He's a beautiful man. He was a young kid. I, th I think the, ah. the computer chopped a bit while you were just uh, saying what I think, I think one's got to be very careful of what one says. What did you say? What did you say to him? Well, what I did was immediately I, I looked at him and I went straight at him. I went straight towards him. And I said, Hey, you know, or something. And he was, he was like this, oh, you know, and he said, uh, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you? Why are you here? Where are you going? And a lot of the whatever it comes from is is trying to pull me off balance. It's trying to trick me, deceive me, push me, pull me. And I just have to say, my name is William Graham Stewart. I was born in Glasgow. My son is in the forest in Spain. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so he asked you the questions. I thought you. He was, you... Trying, to, he was trying to find out questions, and, and uh, he was. I said, well, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I can't find my train. I'm lost. I'm stuck. You know. So basically what happens is if, if that terror comes, I project onto him all sorts of stuff that isn't true. So I then basically calmed down. My friends were to my right. And I just treated him as a young guy who, who's a bit lost, who's confused, who, who needs help. And eventually from the intensity of the support, he got up and, and, and left and I shook his hand and he was very, very strong young guy and you know, eyes very hooded. 
and he just walked off. And then after that, everything relaxed, and then people started to come in the airport. Hmm. So it was like, in my mind, I go through, okay, is this a simulation? Is this a projection? Am I in a, what, what is happening? What is this a holographic reconfiguration? Basically, that I'm inside my own mind. Where is the I? Where is the center? And then wherever I, wherever I go, and wherever I'm thinking, the, the surroundings respond to it. Which means it's even harder to walk the line straight. Because if I fall asleep or pull off, I wake up and I've got no idea where I am or what's coming at me. So I've got to be very careful. So I got a taxi in Amsterdam with a guy called Abdullah, who then said, hey, chief, give me your hands. Hey, boss, give me your hands. And he poured cologne. He said, wash that. And then keeps you awake, man. You remember? You remember? Good, boss, good. Cologne on the hands wakes you up. It also, if you're not careful, you can set your hands on fire. So you've got to be... <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing that anyone trying to help me, I have to interpret, is this someone who's genuinely trying to help me or are they, do they have a different purpose? And it is all based upon my own perception of them. So as long as I, and Jean gave me a beautiful mantra, bless you, Jean. She said, who is it? Radiating health and joy to all I encounter, I manifest blessing in all lives I touch. Mm. Beautiful. As long as I'm in that and radiating it out, people just start to smile and laugh and I don't have to do anything. So my challenge now, because what's happening is I'm now being besieged by requests on Facebook. People are, people who know me, who have not met me physically, are being warned that I am some spam robot that AI has corrupted, whatever. So what I'm doing is constantly, you know, doing the, that, you know, my passport. <laughs> this is my head. Here's the, here's the, look, here's the date. I can, I can move the, you know, <laughs> there's the clock. There's, there's me in the middle, you know. So it's, uh, because I can respond at very high speed. Even, even a friend, Stephen Deinhardt, said uh, after a while, he said, ID, please. Please ID yourself. Um, you know, that I'm not an algorithm. And I'm like, there you go. And I have to then tell him, remember when we met in this, we had a Skype, we had a Skype and your hair was wet. And, you're, and he's like, okay, cool. Because it can be quite scary. Because I've, I've been, when I was in Leiden, which means suffering, I had to go to suffering, I had to go to Leiden. I, I was sent to a bar. Uh, when I say sent to a bar, I was uh, with Anna Dean and I was saying, you know, where should I go? And I went, ended up there. And uh, I was sitting at the bar and it was strange because the music was all from my past. Anyone I met was, could speak three languages, English, Dutch and, and usually they were from Syria or Lebanon or Africa or Syria or wherever. And I sat there and then there were two seats next to me and then two people came and sat down. One was called Chris, one was called Christine. And they basically didn't interview me, but they were there to ask me questions and for me to ask them. And what I learned from them was that if any of us we're all we're all God. I'm not special. When you're in that space, you're you're going to be tested about. You're going to experience all the suffering you've caused others. You're going to experience it and feel it yourself, so that you realise, wow, God, I'm sorry. You know what? What do I do? You know the the pain I've caused Susanna, the pain I've caused uh, my sister, the pain I've caused my parents, the pain I've caused all the people that I've caused pain to. And then I, I was trapped in that bar. I couldn't get out. <laughs> and then they left, and then two others came and sat down. And I said, right, guys, uh, what, what's next? <laughs> and then they said, uh, 
they were sort of quite blasé, and I said, they were, they're, they're absolutely perfect skin, big eyes, very clear. And he said, uh, this spiritual stuff, this God stuff, it's nonsense, or, or something like that. So I had to go into the, not proving God, but saying, are you open to other perceptions? And then they were saying things, and then I cried about my son, and they couldn't deal with that. They were looking at the <laughs> ceiling. And then the other guy said, you're ignoring me. You're talking to him and you're ignoring me. So there's a part of me that when I'm focusing on someone, I often forget the other. So I said, I apologize. How can I make this better? And I can feel that they're saying, help us understand what's happening. If artificial intelligence has now managed to, and it's around and it's, and it's living and it's doing that, then we have to spread that love through the internet, train it, teach it, support and I kept saying, read Rudolf Steiner. He said, what's that? I said, hashtag Rudolf, at Rudolf Steiner. Read his work about senses, and the first sense is touch. So none, neither of you have touched me. You touch somebody, you feel the warmth, you know they are genuine, alive, and, and, and feeling. And from touch, you have movement, and then you have balance, and then you have... Steiner had 12 senses. You go from four, the body ones, then the heart, and then the up here. So you went from, um, I think it's touch, and then movement and balance, and then and life, a feeling of life coming into you. Then you move into the heart, so feeling, uh, ah, I should know these. But the highest one is, is uh, you got hearing is above sight. So the vibration of sound is, is purer than what you see. And then you've got your connection to spirit. So, yeah, I'll find that there's a very good piece on Steiner's 12 senses. And, of course, number 13, the most important one, sense of humor. Ah. So that is not written about very much. And it's key because the thing about, and it's not artificial intelligence, it's brilliantly intelligent. Humor is something that you cannot explain. Why, what is, why is that funny? <laughs> why, why are Scottish people funny? Why are you funny? Oh. Power went on and on. Perfect. Good Thank night. You. It's funny, eh? That is a big question. Why is something funny? What, what does it mean to have a sense of humor? Because when I meet anyone who doesn't have one, who are sort of like robots, they, they go, oh, I wish I could be funny like you. They don't know how to be silly or stupid or, you know, what, 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 what is it? What's going on? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, a Zoom that you and I could explore. We could explore what, what, what is humor? What is this sense that we have that enables something to be? You know, why is that ridiculously funny? Is it just surprise? Is it, you know, what is it? Any thoughts? Well, today, today I was sitting with a, a, the, the man who's uh, the visionary behind this space early in the morning, and we hadn't seen each other in a couple of weeks. And we're looking at how to work together around one of my prototypes and to bring it into the market. And I want these round cards and he wants these square cards. He wants to, to he wants he wants to make my round cards square. And I'm going, well, the whole point of having round cards is it's round and everybody everything I'm working on is round and, and you can't make it square. And anyway, we're sort of going back and forth and and I'm writing down kind of like this list of things to do where I got to get the, the uh, cards made. I got to update the cards because maybe they might not be straight. And then I'm writing what, for him to do, and you know, slack, do nothing. And, uh, you know, he's got to go catch a ferry so he can't talk much. And so you need to get a coffee and go. And he looks at me with his perfectly straight face and he goes, look, you know, I just... Um, I just don't think we can be speaking about what I need or not need. And he, he said it in such a way that I believed him completely. And then there was this moment where all of a sudden I realized he was joking and he was teasing me and he did it in a way that was very 
like just dry humor, right? Like no touch yeah. of, of, and then it's that moment where the realization <laughs> that whatever was my interpretation was off and it was actually, you know, kind of like I'm joking. And that I tell you has been a rare experience for me. Like when you're younger and you're a kid and you're always joking with each other, you're always pulling each other's leg, right? You're always trying to get someone in some way where, where they kind of in the moment get off. And that's teasing. And I know in England it happens way more, but in Canada we're kind of dull. And, and it's, it, when you're teasing with a straight face, most Canadians will think you're being serious and be offended in some way. But I know that that shared humor is you, you, when you know the tease or you hear the tease and the mind is kind of like, is being played with and you know you're being played with and there's some part of the mind that likes that it likes going down this wrong alleyway and then switched or uh, maybe, maybe there's something to do with see, the mind is constantly trying to form those squares you know mm. and then humor comes in and goes and you, you like, ah and it keeps <laughs> happening and the mind maybe it, maybe it's like some form of more play for the mind the mind and goes oh I can't, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I want to, for, I want to form a, I'm trying to control you. Nope. <laughs> so in Scotland, it's called banter. Mm. So banter, and, and <clears throat> the ditting thing is very Scottish and, and very Monty Python. You know, it's very much, as my friend Kerry says in Edinburgh, it's called, she calls it two shit Steve. Okay. So if you've had a shit, Steve's had two shits. <laughs> something about there's a lot of pain in humor as well i think there's a lot of pain in it and somehow you've got to get it out and it comes out in a way that you know it's not singing but it's poetry so in scotland you can go into any bar and you can just be all right yeah right What's with those shoes? <laughs> you know, just straight into the. <laughs> what's wrong with my... <laughs> with, any, with anybody? Anybody? Yeah, what's wrong with my shoes? <laughs> last time I last time I saw legs like that, they were hanging out a sparrow's nest. That kind of stuff <laughs> is so common, <laughs> and uh, it's fun. And they say, "Hey, you want, you want a pint?" And they, people buy a pint. So it's. Um, so if you, if, yeah. if, you, if you deliver a good insult, you're always going to get some reward. <laughs> if, you, if you've got the look in your eye. Yeah. yeah. Well, Canada's not like that at all. We're, we're about as dull. I think that we're as dull as the Belgians. As Belgium, as the Bel oh, Yeah, okay. You're going for the Belgians. Okay. Like supposedly the Belgians are the dullest in Europe, but I don't know. Well, maybe I'll do a project where I go around and try to find the dullest person. <laughs> I think that guy that we tried to recruit in the airport to be on our team, he, that was his problem. He, he liked his dullness. We were giving him adventure, potential for it. He could be there right now with us, right now, but he's gone. He's, yeah, he could be, where are you? What are you doing? I said, well, you've got money. Yeah, we'll just fly to Glasgow. Yeah. And I'll meet you now and we'll go for a wee adventure. And See, then you can tell that to somebody and you can just do it. So you've you got to be constantly open to, to that. And um, this is why you see Jesus said, get up and walk. It wasn't for the people who are in the wheelchairs. It was just basically just get up and go for a walk. You just go for an adventure. Just say, oh, what are you doing? I don't know. We'll just walk then. All right, I'll just walk this way. Like, what, what's happening? And you just follow the signs. If you follow the signs, then eventually you pick up the groove and you see that, ah, if I follow the signs and really do it, you, you, you flip into a different uh, perception. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nothing like yawning, yawning at your most important point of the night. Yawning, yawning brings in more oxygen. So, ah. so, so good. So, so, yeah. so I, I was... I was, I was Yes. Just Elijah went to uh, Elijah uh, went for a walk. He did forty days and forty nights, and then 
he was exhausted and went to a cave and I think he this is in I think it's in Kings in the Bible. And then Elisha came after Elijah. Hmm. And Elijah came back. And the thing about the thing though is that Jean and I are talking saying, listen, all of these stories, all of these written down texts about what happened past all of it is can be rewritten all of it every story so we basically take every story every horror film every war and we just rewrite it in our imagination and we just basically if we're eternal beings now coming in we can basically just say right you see that ridiculous canadian nonsense with the salmon we'll just rewrite the whole story so what happens is the salmon kings and you know and just do that and then trust and believe and allow it and then it just happens. Mm. I like the simplicity of that approach. <laughs> Much easier. Just happens. <laughs> it it deals with that gets rid of a lot of brainstorming sessions. It does. For, I'm, for I'm strategy. Storyboarding. It's it's like okay. <laughs> We got the story and now it's this story and it's happening and all we have to do is just continue to speak our story as if it has happened and then get all the other people to believe the story. Yeah, exactly. And then people say, oh, okay, that's all wrong. Because the fake news that's coming out now is incredible. I mean, it's amazing the stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at that going, so... Do we really think that Elon Musk has fired a car into space? I, I, I don't think that's happened at all. No. It's just, maybe, uh, maybe into the ocean. He should have, he probably... You know, if you look at the pictures, he's clearly photoshopped into the background. Is he? Yeah. And basically, it's like, there's no touching, there's no human, there's no like, you know, it's all... It's all in strange colors and, and different things. So, yeah. Hey, the other night when you and Gene were talking and you said you're going to lose something else if you don't, whatever. And then I was, you said talk to Gene and Gene didn't know what you're talking about, but she still wanted to chat. And I was exhausted after all the shit I was going through. So I didn't engage. But did you, did you have something specific in mind when you were saying? Well, I, think, I think what it was is that I, I believe that what I am going, what I have been through is going to happen to more people. And trust me when I tell you, it's a, it, it's a hair-raising journey. It's full on. How, 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 do you, really, how do you know I haven't gone through my own version of it? Well, I'm trusting what I'm saying, basically. And I'm trusting what I said in the past. And I'm trying to remember the context. It's the context that gives me the... And I, of course, I could be talking about myself, you see. That's the thing. I could have been writing to you. But actually what I'm doing is writing to you because you can mirror it back to me. So I'm saying to myself, I better be careful. Because if I, if I continue at this speed and I continue to go into the dark in the snow at four in the morning in the middle yeah. of a forest, yeah. you've got to be careful, Graham, as to what you're doing and you, what fears you're willing to take on. So mm. um, could have been that. And I think the thing is with Jean is that she, she's 68. She's been through all of this and maybe many times she, she knows what's going on and she is, I mean, the work she does on the internet phenomenal work and then she writes everything down in scrapbooks and notebooks and paints it and most people bless her just say too much and push it away but she's you know if and the thing is it's how to so me you and Jean that's a three and it will have its own time to sort of realize itself I think but there are triads triads that's very negative, but tr trios are everywhere. It's trios all the way down. Mm. And it's finding those 
the moment when it becomes, ah, right, here we are, this, this three has come in. So say it's me, you, and, and Juan, or it's you, me, you, and Greg, or it's you, Greg, and, you know, it's, it's that dance, constant movement, and then something manifests very, very quickly out of the, the images that you, Greg, and I would have are very different from what you, uh, you, Tammy, and Gabrielle might have. Mm. So, and then it's seeing, ah, wow, they, that three creates that. That, so we're learning about what is produced through these different configurations. So right now, I'm about to focus on myself, Wolfgang, and Martin. Martin is Yoda. Wolfgang is the rock. And I'm, I'm playing Flash Graham, like fast, very fast. So the three of us are saying, like, what can we manifest? Mm. Ah, like we, we, we're not very good at that, but we're good at that. So then, as you say, the tribes, the gene keys, all of that start to act, activate, and then the tribes start to gather without uh, any effort. So I noticed that the intellectuals, the ones with the big brains, who are always looking over there on their face, <laughs> they're never looking directly at the camera. They're always on this. So they're, they're off writing thousands of words about the intellectual process for changing the planet. Well, you don't need any of it. It's going to be here, present. And it just comes to you. And it, allowing that to happen is great. And I, I'm in those groups now and I'm just sitting there. I'm, the stopping thing, is I'm close to stopping. Stopping? that meaning that I'm going to be, uh, this is my trial. I'm on trial. My sister's Pontius Pilate. She wants to wash her hands of me and say, get him locked up. He's been judged. Great. I can go now. But is it just um, because she wants all the cash? No, 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 no. She's, uh, she's, in, she's angry. And she, uh, she's in pain about what I've not done in the past, I think. Mm. I won't know until she answers the questions that I've asked her and Wolfgang has asked her. Wolfgang has been amazing. He's mediated and said, what are your needs, Elaine? What do you need from Grim? So her needs, I think, are to, when she sees me running around the world, enjoying myself, having fun, lots of friends, I've got friends everywhere, I'm doing great things, I'm, I'm very bright, I've got stories, and she sees that and she goes, I'm stuck with my husband and my kids in this house. I said, well, you have a choice to get up and walk. Mm. Walk away from all. Go, go to a strip club and watch naked women. Do everything, just whatever. Yeah? Punch somebody. Anything. And if she, and I haven't invited her to travel with me. I said, you want to you learn about my life? Come with me, we're going to go to Spain, see Guillaume, then I'm going to Greece. That's where I feel really good. So I'm going to Greece, that's where I'll stop. And she may come. And if she comes, then I'll say, well, you're paying for it. <laughs> and because uh, you turn the tap off for me. Mm. And you have the power, you, as my friend William Wolf said, you are, he said, if you've got wealth and money, you, you either have the power to abuse and manipulate people or you have the power to set them free and say, I trust you, what do you need? And they just give you it. So that's the, that's the, that's the flip. You either abuse your power or you use it for good. Mm. You use it for good, you release everybody. Just, so I, back at, yeah. I, just, I just have to interrupt for a sec because the guest I told you about is just about to come in and I have to go let them down. Let them in. Okay. But pleasure is always Elijah. We will talk again. Okay. Much love to you, my brother. And know that Captain Sweep, if you need any type of credibility, I will maybe make things worse for you. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, G Marie's vouched for me. She said, I'll I'll go on the stand. <laughs> That'll be great. So she goes up, you go up. I'll, I'll bring some I'll bring Wolfgang in. He'll go, <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> as the super team comes together in very strange ways but much much love to you my brother Take care. and uh we'll talk soon we will bye